go. So uh, my name is Andre Walton. I am the Southeast Regional Organizer for our Wisconsin Revolution. And the reason why we're here today talking is basically um, we're trying to do something a little bit new with our Wisconsin Revolution and actually start a, a little podcast slash YouTube channel to kind of inform people what we're doing, update us, and also talk about some of the latest news that's um, concerning us and how we want to go about uh, addressing it uh, in the future. So, um, the first thing we're going to talk about here is the recent uh, debacle with the elections and the absentee ballots. Um, So, uh, there was, okay, so let's start from the top and go from like how many people requested the ballots. So, there was over 1.3 request 1.3 million requested absentee ballots now that's a lot of absentee ballots that's not something that's normal in wisconsin that's not the usual um thing that happens here um so that many ballots has overwhelmed um election officials it, it they just weren't prepared for something like this it was it's unprecedented to get that many uh, requested ballots so what ended up happening was um a lot of people didn't get their ballots. So there's reports coming in, people were requesting their ballots and it never showed up in the mail. So what this what this left people this left people with options of either A going to the polls, um, risking getting sick and voting in person, or B just sitting out and not voting at all. Um, so unfortunately you know, there was the possibility that they would get their ballot later on because there was an extended deadline that, hey, it can be postmarked past a certain date and you can still turn it in. But unfortunately, because of the the, the ruling of the court, they said your, your ballot had to be postmarked by election day um, to even get counted. So say your ballot came in later and it wasn't postmarked by Tuesday on election day, then you just don't get get counted so i mean (laughs) i mean it really it's 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 crazy because it's putting people at risk because they have to make a choice between hey if it's my health or it's my right to vote and i'm thinking most people are going to make the logical choice that they're going to take their health i mean they're going to afford only so i mean this is it's completely ridiculous and honestly unprecedented i mean we should be way more prepared for this um we should always have like some type of plan in store for any type of situation where people cannot vote in person yet we were completely just caught off guard by this whole thing so i mean and you would think um that there would be some solution for the people who didn't get their ballots, but as of now, there's nothing. So that that begs the question, okay, for those who requested a, a, uh, an absentee ballot, is there going to be legal action? Is there going to be a class action lawsuit against the state? Is the election going to be valid? Is it going to be invalid? There's a lot of open questions here that we don't really know the answers to. Um, so going forward, I mean, we, we really don't know uh, what's going to happen. As far as we know, though, um, everything is going to go forward as proceeded. But what it what it really came down to is it's all about partisan political gain uh, or partisanship political gain. Um, on the Republican side, we see we do see that when they have lower lower voter turnout that they n- normally win the election. And this is going to be historically low voter turnout. We've seen that uh, Milwaukee had lower voter turnout than Madison, and they have uh, a bigger population. So that's that's quite concerning right there. But then again, Milwaukee had only five polling stations open compared to Madison's 66. So right there, that's, that's a form of voter suppression. So it, it really is um, one of those things where it's like, how do you get around it? But going back to... Uh, the partisanship of it um, it was ruled by a overwhelmingly controlled by Republican state legislator um, 
a Supreme Court that is very right leaning. So this was all partisanship from top down. Um, people can question if uh, Tony Evers waited too long, um, if he made the right moves, if the health official health official had a, any say in this matter. There's a lot of questions, um, but at the end of the day, he did do the right thing about uh, po choosing to postpone the election. Um, so. Fighting, fighting going forward as far as our Wisconsin Revolution, um, we want we want all mail-in ballots from here on out when it comes to anything uh, pandemic related, and we should have extended deadlines considering it takes longer to put those requests out and also uh, count those ballots. So. Going forward, there does need to be a lot of changes, um, but it is a, a little bit disheartening how, how it went down. And specifically for me, it's, it's very personal because of what happened in Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee is one of the most vulnerable places uh, for the coronavirus because there's obviously a denser population. Um, uh, more people lack health care in that area. There's lack of ventilators. All the things that you need to kind of remedy this this crisis is probably going to be worse for the Milwaukee area. So, I mean, this is personal for me. Um, so, I mean, my my own family members didn't even choose to vote because of because of this situation. So, uh, it, it really is a bad situation. Um, but to to go back to the Supreme Court issue, um, it's kind of ironic how they were saying, hey, yeah, you guys can vote in person and it, you guys have the right to vote in person and whatnot and we can have to back, uh, push back the election. Yet they were working from home when they were working on this this case. It's like, did you, did you guys not see the irony of that? I mean, you guys literally wouldn't even go to the chambers of the Supreme Court because it was deemed unsafe, but you were sending people to the polls. The irony just strikes me as, as quite ridiculous, but... I mean, in this political day and age, I mean, I'm not too surprised. So um, it just shows the irony and the hypocrisy of, of many uh, elected officials who claim to work for the people, yet not doing much to help us. Um, so that's that's my little uh, rant about that. But I'm going to go on to uh, what's going on in the state legislature and um uh, how the Republicans are basically trying to uh, gain a little bit of power uh, as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. So, um, Republican lawmakers are planning for law changes in response of COVID-19 uh, to give themselves more powers over the state spending cuts. So, basically, they're putting a proposal through a committee right now, so it's not our committee, um, that would give them more uh, power over state spending cuts um, so the budget committee will be able to cut spending from the state's general fund and roll back tax cuts without approval of the, of, of the lawmakers and of uh, the governor. So basically, they'll pretty much be able to do whatever they want with this 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 funding. Um, so this type of funding is the general fund is usually used for schools and health care and things like that. Um, so basically what this proposal says is there will be a rollback of about 2%. Uh, there, there will be a rollback of 2% uh, for the state workers and the UW uh, system employees that they were initially supposed to get a raise. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen now. Uh, if this gets through, obviously. Um, but Tony Evers did say he planned to veto it if that those provisions were to get through. Um so, but there's a lot more things in this bill um, that can be suggested. So there's also um, things about, here, let me bring it up. Bring up just the specifics. So there also, uh, there's also a fight about what will be in the bill. So apparently, 
there's a fight over with the governor, obviously, and the state legislator about specific proposals. So, for Tony Evers, um, he's willing to veto it because there's no plan in the bill to bar landlords from evicting renters or dis or discontinuing the utilities during the pandemic crisis. Uh, the proposal does include some of the governor's plans, including authorizing Wisconsin senior care program to cover all vaccinations and allowing out-of-state health professions to work in Wisconsin during the state public health emergency. It would also allow pharmacists, pharmacists to extend most prescription refills by 30 days during the emergency under certain circumstances and allow temporary conditions for former health care providers. Republicans have previously signaled they supported uh, temporarily lifting a one-week waiting period for unemployment benefits for the state, the plan included in the proposal. The GO plan, GOP plan also includes a modified version of the governor's proposal to create a state fund to reimburse health care providers for services rendered to individuals without insurance during the p pandemic. Republicans would also change the governor's proposal to require insurance coverage for testing, diagnosis, treatment, prescription, prescriptions and vaccine related COVID-19. So under their plan, only testing, testing would be covered, nothing else. So uh, the GOP proposal also includes things that not the things not outlined by the governor. Those include a plan to require hospitals, isolation facilities and other facilities that provide hospitalization to provide the state with daily and weekly reports on the current number of patients, patients, beds and ventilators. The proposal would also be would also prohibit returns of certain personal care products to retailers during the public health emergency and provide health care provides provides manufacturer exemption from civil liberty liability during the public health crisis. So there's a lot of things in this bill that um, <laughs> is quite concerning. Um, but honestly, the just comes down to it's, it seems like a, a small power grab about how uh, state funding is going to be allocated, how it's going to be used. Um, the one that most concerns me is that the Republican bill doesn't bar uh, landlords from uh, evictions and utility, uh, cutting off utilities. I mean, people are literally losing their jobs right now. They don't have money to pay their rent or utilities yet. That's not in the bill. I mean, that should be one of the biggest things in the bill right now, considering people's situation. This doesn't just hurt Democratic constituents. This hurts Republican and Democratic constituents who are not working in essential jobs right now and can't work from home. So that's one of the biggest things that concern me. Um, we'll see how the things, what other things in this proposal are very concerning in the long run if it gets through, but that one is very concerning. So let's hope hope at least that one that proposal gets on the bill about barring landlords from evictions that's going to be the biggest one in my opinion all right and the last thing we're going to talk about is give me one second let me just pull up the article Okay, and the last one we're going to talk about is that um, Oh, okay, so the last one we're just going to be talking about is just some R Revolution updates. So some of the R Revolutions updates that we've been working on, um, we had a big fight on the postponement of the elections. We Where's Tony Evers to postpone the election? He eventually did, so that did work out. Uh, but we also have some other fights right now. So what we're focusing on right now is Medicare for All. Uh, we do have petition up, petition up to urge Representative Gwen Moore to support uh, Medicare for All in the House. Uh, the reason being is uh, we believe health insurance is a human right. And also that this is... The COVID crisis is exposing uh, the, the weaknesses of our healthcare um, system right now. It's showing that more than ever people need this and you shouldn't have to 
go bankrupt because of a pandemic that's completely out of your control. Um, and people were getting bills for thousands of dollars just for going to get tested, which is completely ridiculous. And it's also pretty crazy that um, that we can't take care of the most vulnerable in our system in the time of a crisis. Um, because if these essential workers who don't have health care can't get tested or can't get treated, guess what? That's going to affect everybody because people who do have health care do shop at essential places or eat at essential places. So that's why we need Medicare for all. So everyone can be covered. Everyone can be safe uh, from any uh, harm or financial risk during these times. So we are pushing Medicare for all. Uh, we're also doing some coalition building. So if, if there's any um, coalitions out there who are looking to work with us on various issues, we do believe that working together um, is a much stronger place to be in than working separately. So that's all I had to talk about today. Um, so this is kind of a pilot. We're kind of testing out this YouTube right now and we're seeing how it works out. Uh, but we want to just keep people informed. Um, we want to really target people who don't watch, you know, the news and who want to stay updated some way, somehow. Um, so we're going to be doing this as much as possible. Um, I'm going to be bringing on people here. I'm going to be doing interviews and uh, I want to bring on regular voters, get their opinions about the elections. I want to bring on uh, local officials, state officials and see, get their opinion on these things. So the more, um, the further we go along, the better this is going to get. But we're, we are going to need your support. Um, this is not free. So if you can donate to All Wisconsin Revolution, please go to our website. Uh, donate uh, as much as you can, a dollar, five dollars, anything that you can possibly throw in. So uh, anything helps. And I'll, and I'll put the link in the description for our donation page and where you can sign up for our emails. All right. You guys have a great day.